Welcome everybody, good evening. Welcome to the Innovation Cafe here in Caserne. We, tonight we're going to speak with uh, Ruud Grunefeld, who's going to talk about creating dichroic art objects. And please welcome us after the presentation at the bar where we're going to be networking. There's going to be some questions and answers as well. And uh, if you want to join us for the meetup table tonight, uh, you're going to be able to taste uh, the modern Italian cuisine that we have here at Caserne. So for now, you have, please help uh, welcome uh, Ruth, who is going to talk about Solodan. Thank you, Viviana. Good afternoon, thanks for coming. Um, I want to tell about uh, our company, Solar Lime, and what we make and how we make it. And um, if you have a question, you can also uh, ask it right away. It's not a very strict presentation, so it, it may be fluid. So uh, just uh, let me know if you have uh, any more uh, explanation or something like that. All right. Who are we? Um, my name is uh, Ruud Groeneveld, as Vivian said. I, uh, am an, uh, I studied industrial design and engineering in uh, Delft. And um, together with uh, a study friend, Lawrence Venne, he studied uh, uh, aerospace technology and engineering. And together we started the company Dunk, D-U-N-C. And it's an industrial design company and that's specialized in um, the design, the engineering, and the production of electronic enclosures for corporate uh, companies. Uh, also for uh, some companies uh, in Eindhoven, like Sensofy, Philips. Um, there was another one. Uh, Onera, also a company in Eindhoven. Um, that's that's me, a little bit. Uh, I met, uh, a couple of years ago, I met Carissa. Uh, she studied in, in Eindhoven here at the Design Academy. Uh, she has also her own studio, called it uh, Studio CTT. And she, uh, she is very uh, busy with rethinking processes and materials. And when I show her the dichroic glass, uh, I was working with a little bit, playing, experimenting with it. She was also fascinated by it, so we decided to cooperate to make uh, objects and experiment with, with the glass to create some kind of special uh, effect with it. Um, why, why do we do this? Um, I, I'm very busy with the industrial design company, but I noticed that because working for clients, you are always in a very strict area. You have to solve all the problems. And I like to, to explore things and to, to design the things myself. I, I like to, um, yeah, it's, it's very, very, um, a very safe design in the, in the corporate business. It's, it's black white, gray, maybe they're a company color, but if you do something else and it has no reason, it's, it's, it's uh, not very uh, accepted. And I have a lot of creative juices that has to come out. I already did in my free time uh, design stuff, uh, designing uh, furniture stuff, uh, objects that I was fascinated by or shaped and that kind of stuff. And I put it on Instagram. And um, I was looking for something that I can really make um, products uh, to show to other people, not just uh, renderings or that kind of stuff. Um, we called it Soluda Lime, the cooperation together uh, uh, with Carissa. On the dead name, we, we like to explore the dichroic material. Oh, Soda Lime is also, um, it's the, the two ingredients that is used for normal glass, like glass in a, of, of, of windows of homes. And, uh, and the thing is soda and lime together, it makes the glass. So uh, I'm the soda, I'm the bold guy, because this is the regular. So um, 
That was the idea. Uh, we had our debut lounge last year in uh, Milan at Masli, and um, people were very enthusiastic about it. So we want to figure out how did the people react on the objects we made. Um, but for, before we continue, I'd like to explain uh, the technical stuff a little bit about uh, of the dichroic uh, material. The process to make it, it's, uh, it's a quite um, complex uh, process. I, I, can, I will not explain the details, but uh, um, uh, the simple way is, is just drawn here. You have a, a, a liquid that's dissolved with metal alloys, and you have a gas that creates a liminar airflow, or it's not air, it's actually some kind of alcoholic uh, gas is in it, and it needs to be fluidly uh, a flow um, on the sides of the glass panel. So this is the thickness of the glass. It's a little bit... Uh, a little bit uh, exaggerated, but it's about three millimeters or something. And at this area where the, where the glass is coming out of the liquid, there is a very um, precise thickness layer uh, attached to the glass. So this glass will be pulled out of the liquid. So here it starts and then uh, uh, it's building up. So if you have something like a blob, you cannot do it because the air airflow needs to be uh, straight to the top. Because the, the buildup of the layers is very important. If you do it one time, the dipping process, it's not, it's not um, uh, the saturation is too low. So you need to do it three or four or five times before you see the color coming. And it depends on the, on the kind of metal alloys and the speed of pulling it out, what kind of color, how thick the layer will be on the glass. It's the same, the thickness of the layer and the color that will be transmitted. So the maximum is about 20 layers. Then you have the, the most saturated material. If you do more layers, it doesn't become more better. Here it explains a little bit about the, the way it's working. Uh, I call it uh, color splitting. I do not know if there is a name for it, but this is how we call it. And it splits the color. So you have a white beam. Uh, a white beam actually has all the colors into itself. And then you see the, the layers by refraction because of the, 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 the thickness of the layer. Um, it refracts one part of the light and the other part will be reflected. If it transmits one and it reflects the other. And if it goes to enough layers, then you get only, for example, if this is the white light, then the blue light will come through. So that's the transmission color. And the complementary color, the rest of, of the white light, that's the complementary color, uh, will be orange yellow. So you see that will be reflected. And the more layers you have, the more reflection and the purer the, the transmission color will be. But... But at the other side, you have also a layer. Yeah. yeah the, uh, you, at, the, at the other side of the glass. Yeah. And what happens there? There down? Actually, the same, a bit reversed, but uh, it actually will go through to the other layer because the thickness of the layer, um, that decides what kind of wavelength will come through. So, in the same time, the, uh, the rest of the wavelength will be uh, reflected. Does the blue light now also coming out from the other side? Or yeah. This from the other side, also the blue light will be going up? Yeah, it depends on the angle. But if it's, if it's not on the reflection angle, then it will come through. Yeah. So, if you have a dichroic, dichroic sheet and you will... Uh, lit up with a, a, a white uh, uh, lamp, then the light will go through and then it will be blue on the other side. Probably, I guess, a few nanometers thicker, thinner will make a big difference in the coloring. 
yeah, pico, picometers. Pico actually, meters. actually, it's uh, yeah, it's yeah, uh, the thickness of one layer is about a picometer, but within the layer there will be nanometers that will transmit the color because it's a wavelength of the light itself. So, but it will be around 600 nanometers or something like that, because that that's I do not know exactly red, red, yeah, something like that. Um, yeah, the, the advantage to dip it, you do it on two sides, so you get an extra, uh, extra thickness uh, for free. So you never find coatings with just one side. It's hard to make, so, and it's, it's not, not handy at all. Here you see the, uh, I make it a little bit splashy because I'm more visual focused as a normal human, I think. Um, here you see the complementary colors. For example, you have uh, a dichroic glass that transmit a pink, then the reflection will be pink and orange. And, uh, green. The other side, yeah, green, exactly. And if it's blue, it will be orange, and if it's yellow, it will be uh, this kind of blue. And red is with cyan. And you can also, it doesn't matter, you can, you can make a blue transmitting dichroic glass and you get uh, uh, the, the yellow reflection, but if you do the yellow transmission, you get the blue reflection. So you have always the same two colors. <coughs> Another thing uh, is also interesting is color shifting. And, um, and that's when you move your standpoint, then the color will also a little bit uh, shift in the spectrum. So, for example, if you look just in a straight way through the coating, then it's a short way, so you get a shorter wavelength that can be transmitted. And if you are on an angle, this is longer, so uh, the, the little longer uh, wavelength will be trans transmitted. So, um, you see the color changing when you walk from here to here. You see it changing from green to yellow. You can see it here. This, these are the longer wavelengths. These are the shorter wavelengths. And then you can see it that if it's green, then it go to a longer wavelength and it will be yellow. And this also with yellow will be red and blue will be green and that kind of stuff. Okay. Uh, what did we make with the dichroic? This is the first object we, we designed. It's a, we call it a, with the original name, wall light. Keep it simple. Um, the idea of this product is that we want to show um, the viewer the hidden color of the glass. If it's in an area, uh, you, you always have the transmission and the reflection, but it, it's hard to, to see it because it's always changing the light that comes onto the sheet. So we want to capture the the hidden color. So every color, the sheets are also the, often the transmission color name. So this is a red sheet, actually maybe a little pink from your side. Yeah, it's pink, pinkish red. And the, the hidden color in the two sheets is like uh, cyan and blue. And we, we, we created two sheets uh, in a in uh, triangle so that the light beam is um, zigzagging within these two sheets, and because they are going to a smaller point, it will be like a, a 3D shape. I can show it in the animation. And uh, we want to give an O to the, to the hidden color in this, in this thing, it's a cyan blue. And here you can also see the color shifting. This is actually that one. Um, and if you are standing here, you see another color than if you are standing in front of it. Because now it's, I think, orange from your viewpoint. And when you're standing straight for it, it's, it's red. There's another version, it's a blue one. And blue has uh, yellow as a uh, hidden color. And you see the, the reflection on the back side is actually the, the, also the hidden color the yellow-orange, because it reflects on the backside and comes to the, from the backside of this one, it comes on the, on the wall. 
Um, another project we made is the mirror. It's a behind pillar. Um, and what it, um, in early times you, you had uh, uh, photos and if you, very old photos, you see some shifting of the color. On, on, uh, next to the faces you see some shifting because of chromatic aberration. Um, we, find out, we found out that we can also mimic it with the dichroic sheet in combination with a mirror. And um, yeah, it, it looks very mesmerizing if you are standing in front of it. The brighter the room, the better the effect. So in this area, it's a little bit dark, but you can still see the effect of it. Another object is, um, uh, we call it the sculptural mirror. It's a, a disc of dichroic glass, the highest thickness, so also the most expensive. If it's twice the thickness, it's twice the higher price. Because it's still flat? No, this is a little bit curved. It's, okay. it's actually the same one, only in other okay. surroundings. So that, that, that's the difficulty to design for it, because this is another surrounding, much, much more light, and you see other colors coming. And here it's not dark, but it's the, the, the brown wall makes it a little bit other well, colored. Just to produce the glass, you have to have a flat sheet. So. Yeah, that's the problem. And, <laughs> and um, everybody said, you, you, you cannot bend it. And we said, OK, let's try it, and let's see what comes out. And you cannot bend it. <laughs> <coughs> I will come back on it later on. But this is also now it's a fixed uh, uh, impression, but actually it it uh, mirrors the the surroundings. So this is the this is the the top. This is the bottom. This is uh, the left side of the room, and that's the right side because it's a it's a, a hole. So you cannot directly understand what you are looking at because all this uh, change. Have you been able to see the specific about the, the curvature? Yeah, very easy. What because curvature is um, the, the number. Well, yeah, yeah, over how did you get to this specific curvature? Um, I... Um, I calculate the curvature because I know what kind of radius it's allowed. But I, find, I found it in doc, uh, documents, but in the document it was not set how many layers is used. So that's tricky because if it's thin layers, then you can bend it a little bit further. And if it's thick layers like this, uh, you, are, you are not... You bend it as much as possible. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, normally, it would start a video. Wait, I go back. Yes. It doesn't work. Uh, actually, you see it rotated, and you see the complete palette. You you can see it change. Uh, can I try it? Oh yeah, there it is. And actually, it looks not transparent, but it, it is still transparent. You see the the white bulb in the middle. You can also see it with the one on that wall. Yes. Thanks. Oh. I think it it, 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 it needs to, to load, I think, so. OK, I, I, how do we design uh, uh, this kind of objects? Um, we started to calculate, although I started to calculate things and was looking for the, the nicest uh, color combination, that kind of stuff, but I stopped it because in reality it's not. You can do it, but you have to see it to, to feel if it's working, yes or no. So what we did is just experimenting and try what comes out. Especially with double dichroic, it's hard to, um, yeah, to find uh, the, the right color in between uh, just by calculation. 
So we did a lot. This is just one tenth of what we all tested. And we looked for what works good, what doesn't work, and that kind of stuff. Sometimes it's a slight movement of another dichroic color, and it totally changes uh, with the interaction of the two, two different uh, dichroic sheets. Uh, other way is uh, coincident. Um, at one moment, we placed a dichroic sheet in front of a, of a mirror sheet, and then we saw this happening, and we thought, hmm, uh, how is that possible? And we explored it, we tested it, and we figured out, okay, we can make something like a chromatic aberration effect uh, by using the same kind of setup. Another thing is um, happy accident. We are always happy with happy accidents. And um, that's what happened with, with this product, with the sculptural mirrors, actually. In, our idea was to make a very clean sheet that is bended, that it's not just cracked. Before it will crack, we want to stop the bending. And then, then we thought that this super smooth glass object and uh, it will reflect uh, super cool. Um, but the first one uh, was like this. So actually we were very disappointed. Um, and we had two, three weeks to uh, go to Milan with, uh, with our debut lounge, so a little bit stress. Uh, but we thought, okay, we can make it. We ordered new, um, new sheets, uh, less thick, because we thought the thickness was the problem. And we did some tricks in the bending mall to make it less bended. And uh, just before time, we get very smooth uh, versions of the sculptural mirror. Um, I fly to Milan with a, with a box with the mirrors, and uh, and I was there. We we put it on the wall, and we were hmm, a little bit boring for what we expected to see. It was just one color, the color of the glass, and a little bit reflection. And um, but we also already had shipped the the this one, not not this one, but the cracked one, because there was space in the box. So we thought. Let's bring it uh, with us to uh, Milan. And when we uh, tested the, the smooth one, we were not happy. And then we said, OK, let's try the, the ugly one. <laughs> and we put it on the, on the wall. And it was phenomenal. The, all, all the different lights of the area was uh, reflected in, in this one. Because it was very irregular with the cracks and some little dents into it that makes it, uh, uh, yeah. Like this, you see all this kind of crazy liquid-like things, and especially when you start moving, you, uh, yeah, you are a little bit mesmerized. I, I was mesmerized, so we did not expect it. But now we only make the cracked versions because it's it's much more interesting to see, and we are making different colors now to test uh, how it will look. Um, yeah, this, this, this is actually our, our thing we, we struggle with, is what, what are we making? Is it design? Is it art? Um, I have to ask you, is it art or design? What is it? Because I, I'm not a Leonardo da Vinci with painting like. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but that is diff difficult to sell, actually. I, I, I think uh, somebody said to me, it's art when it's in the gallery, it's design when it's in the shop. I, I, th I thought it's not super crazy. Uh, but the problem we have is that the dichroic glass is very, um, the production is very expensive. So we have to sell it as art. Because if we sell it as design, then it's much too pricey for, OK, design can cost something, but uh, yeah. art is, is easier, we thought. We do not have enough experience yet to answer this question. But um, here I try to mimic it in, a, in, a, in two images. You can see I'm a product designer, of course. Um, by the way, this is generated by uh, 
artificial intelligence. Okay. I was also interested in how, what kind of level is it already. It's pretty good. I think we, we need to worry about it in some way or embrace it. Yeah, the not the object images. No, no, the, the yeah, the other objects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This not. But for example, uh, yeah. This I also did. Yeah, and also the calculator models. Yeah, yeah. It's the fastest way. I can also look for a calculator that explodes, but. Then and I don't have the rights to use it, so <laughs> this is better for me, I thought. And it's not, yeah, you saw it there. But that's why I trained spindles or on my calculator. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you cannot control everything, <laughs> you know. but uh, that's okay. Um, the future, are, are we making the, the coming 10 years dichroic objects? No, I think not, that's not the plan. We are also investigating, we, n not now, because we think there's a lot to do in dichroic glass. We have not figured out every secret of the dichroic glass. Um, but we are very curious in, we, we, we like to step into unknown territories, like where nobody has been before and find some objects that, that mesmerizes uh, uh, the people. And, ask questions, how did they do it? That's what we like. Um, one thing we have our eyes on is uh, uh, anodizing titanium. With anodizing aluminium, you have to use a color bud to put it in to get the color. And with titanium, it's not needed. You can use the voltage of the anodizing uh, uh, process, and then you can change the color. So for me, it's very interesting. So the colors are secretly hidden in the titanium. Is it uh, also uh, done by heating? And, and, and no, and no, because it's... Sometimes I see... Uh, yeah, yeah, you can see it also on, on metal. On normal metal, can, they can do it in aluminium also, I thought. No, it's, it's just by, uh, um, by electrolytical... Uh, by? Electrolytical uh, yeah. situation. Yeah. So it's not something added. I don't know what and how, but it's interesting for me enough to explore it. Maybe we cannot find a suitable object for it. Another object is Aerogel, uh, super high-tech, uh, designed by NASA somewhere in, a, in a, the space uh, companies. It's super light, and I think it's the super cool as, as you can make a uh, a wire in it and a, and a light bulb in the shape of a, of a cloud. Then, uh, because it's, it's, the edges are transparent and in the middle it's more, because there's more material, it's more soft, so it will diffuse the light perfectly. Um, I cannot wait to, to do this kind of test. It's only a little bit difficult to get the material, but maybe one year later it's more, uh, more achievable, I think. So that's actually my talk. Uh, and again, an artificial dichroic jellyfish. Thank you so much. Yes, any questions? Yes? Somewhere in the talk you mentioned uh, you only can make two layers of something, but you put some uh, vaporizing metal, I think. Um, can you? I'll also make a dichroic glass only on one side of the glass, get rid of the no, that, airflow on the other side. It, make the effect of course less. Yeah, it, it, why is it, it, it's not needed now? Because you are twice the, you, 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 you can get two layers for the price for one. If you want one layer, it's actually more difficult because you have to, to stop uh, doing the, the, the other side. So. It's m not yeah. often done. Oh, the, the flow is naturally on both sides. Mm, no, no, no it's, it's it's forced by by the. Forced, yeah. yeah, but you can close it on the other side. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it's not only the 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 adhesive of the coating will be less good, and it will be not 
uh, regular because the art of making dichroic glass is actually to make it exactly the same again and again and again. Yeah, yeah, yeah I can imagine. Yeah. Because also with the bending, I can imagine the bending gets a little bit easier. Maybe you only have to coat it on one side. Oh, yeah. But if you do this in the picture, you have both sides, the same coating. Yeah. yeah. And if you do it twice and do, uh, 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 do a foil on one side and you, uh, or something, then you can make dif uh, both sides different. Yeah, but what is, that, that's, that's, that's also more a hassle. Uh, and you can also use two dichroic sheets that are different and put yeah, it together. Different effects, because uh, I, I also hear you are experimenting. Yeah. Yeah, but, but we experimented with uh, making a gradient, and that's also possible. Okay. Actually, in the in the mirrors, there's a gradient dichroic sheet, but it's it's because uh, every layer needs to be the same thickness on the same place, actually, and it changes, so it's harder. So you have more more um, uh, wrong versions that can be produced. So that may, and it is already expensive, so it's. <laughs> Super expensive. That's why the mirrors are quite expensive for us to sell also. I have a question in regards to the design and art definition of your, of, of your uh, objects. Yes. Would you agree with the concept that whenever is design is like mass produced and art is less? Yeah, that's, that's also marketed. something. There are different criteria when it's art. It's also. Uh, I think it's also art when people that are in the art business say it's art. <laughs> then it also becomes art. So that there are different criteria and I think you have to mix them together to, to uh, judge if it's art or design. It's important. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, I, think it's, I think it's important. Because, yeah, important if it's art or design or for me. I think it's important because you have to know where uh, if you we, we can experiment it, but if we cannot sell it, then we have to stop experimenting. So we need to sell it. It also depends on the customer, I think. Yeah, you have to find the right customer. And um, for example, we also um, showed the the mirror and the sculptural mirror uh, at Fete Bona, and we get a lot of requests, but no selling. So that that. Yeah. There will be also people that can buy it, the price, but um, I think when it's in a gallery, it's easier sold than when it's in uh, a normal furniture shop. But you would, you would, like you would think that... Oh, sorry. It's like the same discussion you can have about the retail chair, you know? Yeah. Design or art. Yeah, but so the customer, I could, uh, for example, Philips or so, other Yeah, there is a, a cheaper version yeah. and that's using a 3M foil or there are also mimic foils. Yeah. But you see, uh, the, I see the difference very clearly. So um, uh, it's like you can buy a plastic diamond or you can buy, buy a diamond diamond. That's how see, this is a little bit over exaggerated, but it's more like if you sell it as art, you yeah. cannot use the... But in principle, if you, for example, the old uh, halogen lamps, uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. To, to, to pass through the infrared light and to reflect the visible light. True. Yeah. And that's also a mass production uh, process, maybe cheaper than. The yeah, they do it on the other way, but yeah. uh, it's it's because it's small, they can do it. Yeah. If it's big, then it will be another other thing, and it's not as as pure as the sheets we use now. If I'm going to have to interrupt you yeah. and I'm going to ask you to please join us at the bar to do more networking and for those of you who want to stay for dinners, please welcome us. Uh, we welcome you at the meetup table at 7.30 where we're going to have a mixture of uh, different finger food. So thank you so much for coming and I hope, uh, we hope to see you next week at the, on Thursday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
hey, you're still here. So you like the video. If you want, subscribe and click the bell. <laughs>